Hi, I'm Parveen, the Spice Queen, and today I want to show you how to make the most popular dish I've been making for the last decade. It's a chicken masala. Popular for my children, my clients. Apparently, the Queen likes a masala sauce, so here we go. Let's go through the ingredients. So here I have about 900 grams of chicken fillet. You can use breast, you can use thigh, whatever you like. Then I've got two onions, which I've sliced and then a tin of tomatoes. You can use fresh if you like, but I prefer a tinned because you get a nice masala sauce with the tinned. Six tablespoons of oil, coriander, and we have here, this is six cloves of garlic and ginger, which I've blitzed down in a little mini blend, which is super duper, and it makes like a ginger and garlic paste, and salt for seasoning. And then you're thinking, where are the spices? Don't worry, I have them here. <laughs> this is my spice bag from Parvin Spice King range for chicken masala. In here, you've got chili powder, garam masala, coriander powder, and turmeric. If you want to use the, the, the actual spices, then go for it. But if you want something a bit quick, a bit more simple, just use a spice bag. Let's get on with the recipe. Nice big pan. Now, you are thinking that's quite a large deep pan. How much masala sausage is gonna make? But I like to use a deep pan so that you're not gonna get lots of splatters and splashes on you because as you'll see later on, quite a bit of stirring to do and that's a very important part of the recipe in goes the oil what i like to do is just heat it up for a, a few seconds first before i add the onions because i just just like the sizzle <laughs> in go the onions all of them so now what we're doing here with aim of the game is to make a masala sauce now you're thinking what is a masala sauce now i'm speaking to somebody earlier so masala actually means sauce is chicken in a sauce um, chicken masala but masala also means spice so it can get very confusing i think just cook the recipe and don't worry too much about the spices so that's the onion two onions and what we're doing here we're going to make a curry sauce in which to cook the chicken now the chicken's raw and i don't want to seal it i'm not going to pan fry it i'm not going to oven bake it i'm going to add it in raw okay into the masala sauce so now we're going to wait for the onions to turn a lovely golden brown which take about one to two minutes You probably notice I've, I've saved my tomato tin, not because I'm advertising, I just want to show you what I do to get the best of my tin tomatoes. I like to use every bit. While those onions are frying, I'm just going to quickly go through with you about garam masala. So if I just reach over here. Now this is whole spices. So as you can see here, um, you've got bay leaf, we've got coriander, we've got cumin, black pepper, cloves. Um, there's a lot of spice and these are whole spices. And what I would do is I roast them down for 30 to 40 seconds in a hot oven and then I grind them into a, into a powder and you end up with this. Move that aside. So this is what you call a garam masala. You know I was saying earlier masala means sauce. Masala also means spice and garam means warm. So this is basically a warm spice. Smells just divine. You can smell the coriander and the cinnamon and the bay leaves. Now the garam masala is the most popular spice to use in a chicken masala, a lambuna, all these meat dishes and I thought I'd just go through it with you and tell let you know what's in it. Okay, back to our onions. The onions are caramelizing, we're getting a golden brown. Just smells divine. Okay, and in that, adding the ginger and garlic. Now, with ginger and garlic, don't worry if you, you don't use, you don't have to use fresh all the time. You can use frozen ginger and garlic. That smells lovely. Turn the gas down. I want to cook that for about one minute. It just smells gorgeous. Now, quite quickly from here, we're going to create the curry sauce in which to cook our chicken. We've got ginger, we've got garlic, we've got fried onions. I'm going to add my tomatoes. Now, I, I do get letters saying, do you always use tin parveen? Well, I like the tin because especially this thick juice, it creates a lovely thick sauce. You can use fresh if you want fresh. It's entirely up to you. Cooking a curry is not rocket science, and it's not really a science. You just really chuck it in and cook through. It's that easy. In go the tomatoes. I'm going to add some salt for seasoning. And then in goes the spice bag. Give that a stir. So we have the spice bag here. That's it. Chicken masala, pie and spice skin. So we've got chili powder, garam masala, tandoori powder, and turmeric. So the best thing about the spice bag is everything's done for you. It's a perfect little bag for the recipe. So in goes the bag, the whole thing. If I 
down there. And that's creating, oh, it smells so good. Turn that down a little bit. And you know, earlier I said I saved the tin, so what I want you to do is just use the tin, sometimes add a bit of water, get the last bit of that juice out. And that is it. Now that, believe it or not, if I just turn the gas down and show you, right, that's better, it was quite noisy, wasn't it? Can you see that? Now that is, you've got the ginger, you've got the garlic, you've got the onions, you've got the tomato, you've got the salt, and you've got the spices. But if I was to taste, all I'm going to get is a really raw spice and quite a saltiness. And what we want to do now is let the flavours infuse. So give that, cover the lid and give it a good 10 minutes. So I'm going to move that aside and show you one that I've been cooking for about 10 minutes. Okay, so here we are. Now, if we look in here, the difference in the pan is the sauce is now, let me turn the gas up a little bit. The sauce is reduced and what's happened, it's a deeper, richer colour and it'll be a deeper, richer flavour as well. So if I was just going to taste, the best way to taste is back of the spoon and single, single dip only. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. That's really come together. The other thing I want to just quickly say to you is when you are cooking with these chicken masala sauces, use a stainless steel pan, it's heavy bottomed, and use a wooden spoon. Don't use a stainless steel spoon with a stainless steel pan. You get a metallic taste as they rub together. And don't use a non-stick pan. Use a non-stick -non pan, if that makes sense. Because you want to reduce the sauce, so you want a stainless steel pan, not a non-stick. Okay, so back to my sauce. You know when you get those jar sauces, which I never use, that's what you have in the jar sauce is exactly what's in this pan. So this is a chicken curry sauce. But how quick was that? So quick. Okay, in goes the chicken. No basting, no marinating, no sealing, nothing. It just goes straight in. And that's when I'm teaching this, people are so surprised about, is really just gonna put raw chicken in a sauce? Absolutely, because the chicken is the skin, it's porous. But what that's going to do now is take on all the flavours of that curry and it's just going to taste gorgeous. Look at that. Already you can see that coming together looking like a curry. But what we need to do now is fry that chicken in the spices to get that rich depth of flavour. And that's what I'm going to do. So you can see now, if you look in the pan, it's, 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 the sauce is reducing and the oil has come to the surface. And what's happening is now, is the chicken pieces are frying in that lovely, oily, spicy sauce, and that's what you have to do. Sometimes people say, oh, can I just add water now, Parveen? Because I'm sure you add water at the end. If you were to add water now and let it simmer, it'd be like a spicy chicken casserole. The depth of the flavour comes from the way you fry the spices and the way you stirring and keep stir frying the meat in the sauce. It's a really important part of the process. I promise you it's worth the taste. Keep going. So it's had about five minutes now and it's starting to cook. And you can see that it's looking like a curry or chicken masala now. Um, a couple of things about meat. Um, see, my mother would always add a few chicken wings or thighs in there because it's quite moist and you need the flavor. But um, many, in my experience, people do like fillets of chicken, but try the thighs or try the chicken wings, add them because they just add that lovely depth of flavor, like real chicken flavor. Because after all, that's what chicken stock's made from is chicken bones. Um, and we want a nice chicken flavor. So that is cooking. Now, I don't want to sit here for another five, ten minutes, babies are just stir frying it. So I'm going to babysit it. I'm going to tidy up, keep coming back for a minute, two minutes, put the kettle on, have a cup of tea, and I'll see you in five minutes. So that's had about five to seven minutes now. I've had a cup of tea, I've had a little tidy up, and I'm going to have another little taste. Okay, again, remember how I tasted, just literally have the sauce in the back of the spoon, it's the best way to taste. Oh, it's just, oh, actually, it could do with a bit more salt. Mm, I'm going to add a tiny bit, tiny bit more salt. The um, thing about salt, you need the salt to bring out the flavour of the chilli. When I first started writing recipes, a friend of mine cooked the chicken. He said, great, Harvey, but the recipe didn't work. I said, did you add salt? He said, no, no, I didn't add salt. I said, no, you need the, taste of the, you need the salt to bring out the taste of the chilli, otherwise the chilli is too sharp. You can reduce the amount of salt, but you, you actually do need it to bring out the taste of the chilli. Okay. Last ingredient is coriander. Really popular in Indian dishes, but if you don't like coriander, you don't have to add it. Or if you like my husband, add double because he loves it. Okay, in that goes. And just 
It smells gorgeous, really lovely. And um, what I did was turn the gas out. I just want to show you something. So how, what happens is as you're reducing the sauce, it can sometimes stick to the edges, but that's good because it caramelizes the sauce. If it sticks, just add a dash of water and loosen it around the edges. And that's the way to cook it. That's nearly ready. Get my naan bread, get my chicken, put my feet up, I'm ready for a night in with a curry. I just lift up with a piece and show you. Okay, so that didn't need marination, that didn't need frying off, that didn't need sealing. And what happened is skin is porous, chicken's porous, it, it's meat. Uh, it's ingested all that lovely, lovely sauce. And that's what you're going to taste. I'm happy with that. Just going to add some more water and actually make the masala. Now masala actually, I said at the beginning that masala means sauce. And we're creating a sauce. Turn that down. Gonna add a bit more water in that in a minute, but look at that. That just looks so tasty. Cover that. Give it another five minutes for the coriander to infuse with the rest of the flavors. And we're done. Just gonna serve it up now in my perfect little miniature wax. I think they're so cute. In it goes. One good thing about this recipe is that it's freezeable. So you can batch cook on a weekend when you've got the time and you can just freeze it in single portions. Take it out of the freezer, two minutes in the microwave, good to go. I'll see you next time.